So I'm going to go ahead and give you the update on the shop enclosure project. I went ahead and I struck a deal with the contractor that I've been talking to, and we come to an agreement on the on the price and all the work that's going to be done. So work actually started today on it, and I'll show you that here in just a second. But I got a lot going on this weekend, trying to get stuff moved around and I'll, I'll mention that to you what we're doing but i'm trying to get everything organized to where contract can get work done i've also got to get machines out of here and, and get them out before the frame in is done on this end where the door is going to go so we're going to do a complete job it's uh the contractor is we're going to pour footer over here it's going to be walled up and it's going to be insulated on the wall the ceiling up here is going to be insulated the outside is going to have a uh, tin. I believe it's going to, I believe he called it Aluma uh, Galvalume, I believe is what's going to be on the outside of the building there. And then the inside, we're going to run uh, white sheet metal along the ceiling along the side. It's also going to be uh, fully run with electrical for 110, you know, receptacles all the way down each side of the wall. It's going to have lighting all the way down. We're going to put LED lighting in and the one thing that we're not going to do right now is three-phase power and we eliminated that to try to cut cost right now to try to get it in my budget which he did and also i'm not sure where exactly the machines are going to sit just yet that's going to be out here which would be the pedestal grinder and the crankshaft press and probably you know something else out here along the way so it's going to be fully done we're going to have a little bathroom out here so we'll have a toilet and a sink you know something that every shop needs to have and then we'll have an entry door and a roll-up door here on the end so he was out here today and this is what we've got done so far he got the footer dug and after he got the footer dug or as he was dig digging it we had a really big thunderstorm come through and it just it rained and rained so he was able to get the footer done and he's going to be back in the morning and he's going to start pouring the footer this is where the wall is going to mount to right here so it'll be in line with the post he's going to use two by sixes for the studs and we've also got a new water line coming in and that's coming from the uh, side of the house over there i had whenever i had the the house repiped i had a tap over there so that we could plumb water out here to the shop so they've tied into that and that's that's run all the way down to the end here The footer will be, I believe he says, one inch below the slab. And then that, that little, that's just a pad for the, for the entry door right there. This is busted because of the big forklift I was using. And whenever I was br bringing the, for the uh, drill press over there, I did that with the forklift. So he is going to remove this busted section right here and actually repour that as he's doing the footer right here. That will all be reformed. So I did get a, a viewer of mine that contacted me and he, want, he wants this drill press. He's offered to buy that from me. And this drill press right here, which is the Cincinnati Bickford. This is a Kennedy Auto, by the way. Uh, he's gonna come down whenever I'm ready for him to come down here. He, he lives way up in New York City, or New York anyway, not New York State. He's gonna come down and he's gonna pick these things up and he's going to take this one home with him but the the cincinnati he's going to be dropping that over at, at keith's house so he's helping both of us out by doing that but i need to go ahead and get the things out because once the end wall is framed in for the for the door i won't have enough height for the uh this one would probably pass through but you see the kinetic auto it sticks up there quite a ways so i want to get these things out of here this weekend get them out of the way so that's what we're working on. Um, trying to get things cleaned up now. And tomorrow, Saturday, Gil is going to be coming over to give me a hand. And we're going to try to get both of these drill presses moved down to that end. And then Sunday, my buddy Joe down at the welding shop is bringing his forklift up here. And he's going to help me. And he's going to pick them up. We'll have them down here somewhere. We're gonna, and he's going to pick them up. And I'm going to set them on my trailer. That's something I've never shown before. But that's that's my personal trailer that I built back around 2004. 
So I'm gonna set the drills on that trailer and this other pallet of stuff right there that I need out of here. And I'm gonna take the trailer down to work on Sunday and I'm gonna store it down there in the uh, back parking lot behind the building. And then whenever he comes down to get the drill presses, I'll have a forklift down there that I can use to pick them up off of my trailer and onto his. So that's the plan. Try to get it all cleaned out this weekend. I still need to find a home for this. I, I was able to get a little charge on the battery and I can still use it if it's actually plugged in and plugged into the extension cord. I can use it that way. So we'll probably be making use of that, try to get the drill press moved. If anybody is watching, want this uh, drill press, I'll let it go for cheap. I just need to get it out of here. You know, give me a couple bucks to put back into the shop. That's all I'm asking. Otherwise, I'm gonna probably end up just having to take it to the scrap yard. I'm thinking about selling these two or trying to get rid of these cabinets just to make more room out here. I'm really trying to focus on thinning down what I have and kind of starting fresh once this uh, shop enclosure is completely done and have this area out here for a welding area. We'll have a you know welding and fab. We'll have all the grinding machines out here, the belt sander, the pedestal grinder, things like that. We'll also have the belt sander, I'm sorry, the, uh, the bandsaw out here, and we'll have material storage out here as well. Even that rack right there, I may just have Joe set that out there in the uh, side over there by the fence to get it out of my way because that thing's extremely heavy and hard to move and it's all everything on there is already rusted up anyway so i may just get it out of here this back corner is where we're going to put a bathroom i believe we're going to go over six foot so we'll have like a six foot by six foot uh, room right here uh, bathroom and a sink and we're going to frame up a place on the wall right there where i'm going to install an air conditioner I know I've got guys mentioning that I need to put that outside. I'm not ready to move that outside and pour a slab and a cover for it, so it's gonna stay right there for now. Later on, I may be able to focus on that as another project and get that outside, but for now, it's gonna be right there. And uh, we're also gonna paint the wall too while we're at it. We're gonna paint it white. So that that's about where we're at. I'm very excited about this. Very excited to see this done. It's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a little bit of money, but I'm ready to get it done. This is part of the shop, and I want to make this area right here a very functioning part of the shop. You know, have welding and fab and material cutting and material storage over here, and then over there in that side of the shop, you know, it'll be the, the machine shop and the tools. So that's kind of what I got planned for now. And the, uh, the patrons have really helped me out here. I've been saving all that money, all those contributions to put back into this project. So that is helping out a lot to pay for this. If you guys want to uh, check that out and kick in a dollar, I've always got the, the link in the video there for you to check out. And I always appreciate the extra help there. So that's going to be all for now. And I'll give you some more progress shots as things get done. I'm getting this Cincinnati Big for Drill Pressed moved out away from the wall enough where I can get that little forklift in here and pick it up to move it to the other end of the slab. So just uh, showing you uh, uh, an easy, a slow but steady and easy way to move a piece of equipment. All you need is some round stock, whether it be solid or pipe or whatever. I prefer mine kind of small, keep it close to the ground. That's an inch and a quarter diameter tubing down there. And just a note, this is the fourth time that I've moved this drill press and after I move it today I'll have to move it one more time onto somebody else's trailer and I hope I never have to move this drill press again. Not complaining, just stating the obvious there. <laughs> I've, used, I've, I've never used this drill press and yet I've moved it, I'm going to move it five times. This pry bar is invaluable. Piece of rectangular tubing that's backed up here with another strap and a piece of bar right here.
So I got a bunch of leaves under there that I couldn't get out. I tried to tried to get them all out. Wasn't all the way through there. All right. Just slowly work it out of there. And I could get back there and push it too, but this is a more controlled way to do it. Just pry up on it and twist it, twist the bar. I got the little forklift to work, but the battery is just shot where you can it really won't hold a charge at all so i used it like one time to move that pallet around and it and it killed it so i can actually run this thing with the battery charger hooked to it and it runs it runs great with the battery charger hooked to it so i'm using it while, while it's plugged in and, and charging i mean it's just plugged directly into the forklift should i say so I'm going to use it to pick up the Cincinnati drill press and move it to the other end of the slab. And once that's out of the way, uh, Gil should be here in a couple hours and then we're going to start working on the big drill press. We'll probably just roll it. We'll put it on rollers and roll it down out of the way. And we'll probably, I'll probably pick this date press up, move it over there out of the way to uh, kind of make room and probably just try to roll that drill press straight down this way. Try to make a U turn here. I'll set it on some blocks there and that would be really easy for Joe to come in right there and, and grab that one up. Okay I got three blocks on it. This uh, That base is kind of made like a three point system so got two on this side and one in the middle on the other. Tilt motor screams, man. There we go. 
There it is. Let's back it up. Okay. <laughs> one down. We got the big one to go. So look who showed up. Everybody's been asking about Gil. Well, he, he's alive and he's doing well, and he come over to give me a hand today. So we are already been down there busy getting that, getting that drill press moved, and I, I wanted to get a quick shot so that everybody can and say hello to Gil. <laughs> hey, you too. So, Good to go, man. I appreciate, Let's move, move I, some stuff around. And, I appreciate his help, so we're getting ready to get this thing out of here. Yeah, Adam's <laughs> got some really nice upgrades coming. Y'all are going to really enjoy. Yeah, I can't Enjoy wait. some future videos and, and, and get your shop uh, I think this, this area is going to look like a whole different shop once it's done. Absolutely. Yep. All right. We're going to go, we're going to go get busy. Check y'all later. Yeah, you don't even need me now. Oh no, I need you. million dollar pry bar the people knew how bad of a back I had and here I am moving uh, here we are moving this equipment yeah 
It's only because of this right here that we can do it. That's what we get for having heavy irons and no forklifts. So we got them both positioned that way so that when, uh, tomorrow morning Joe can come in with his forklift and grab both of them just like that. I think it's one of those T-Rex style or Trex forklifts so he's got a boom extension on it. So he should be able to just come right to the end of the concrete and extend his boom out to grab this one. He said it's a uh, 5,000 pound capacity so I think he should be good to go. Well, Gil just left, and we got everything done the way I wanted to. Got the drill presses down there, got the metal rack down there. Everything's cleaned out as best I can do it for right now. So now this kind of gives you a better, better look. Our bathroom's going to be right there. And I'll probably most likely keep the, the presses right here. I'm going to have to move them out again because we're going we're gonna to paint this wall white. So I may need to get them out of the way. I think I might have failed to mention that this air conditioner is going to be mounted on the back window of the shop. So that's that's going to be another project coming up real soon. I need to run the electrical back there for it. But so that's going to that's going to get gone. But we got our work done for the week, the weekend. I mean, tomorrow we we still got to move those. But I've got everything cleaned out. And uh, Monday. The guys are going to be here to get the footer completed and get all this fixed right here. So all next week is going to be work for the for the crew. Got these things moved safe down here so far. So next step is to get them picked up and set them on the trailer out there. I'll be ready to get them done. So it's looking good. I've been trying to sell those two tables as well. I mean, I put them on Craigslist. I had one guy seem interested, but he ain't never called me back. So I'm gonna eliminate those two cabinets. I want as much out of here as I can get. 
the metal rack is going to go outside against the fence this is all rusted up anyway so I'm not really too worried about it I just don't want it in here anymore so really all we'll have left once the, once the job is done is the is the saw and the two presses and the air compressor because hopefully this is going to get gone as well so that's where we're at so far and hopefully you've been enjoying the little bit of content that I'm giving you and I'll be sure to turn the camera back on as we start getting some of this work done, okay? What's up, man? Oh. Oh, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm all right. It's not lockers leaking. I can't, <laughs> can't breathe this morning. That's the new one, huh? That's the new one. That's cool, man. Yeah, that's a little version of your other one. Yeah, it's, uh, it'll pick up 5,500 pounds. Really? Yeah. Okay. You got a telescopic boom. Yeah. The whole head will tilt back side to side too. Oh, okay. This is neat. Do you have a side shift on it? No, no side shift. Okay. No, just the... You got it from King Line? Yep. I'm Todd King. It's All right. Me. Well, I pretty much got everything ready for you. I got the drill press sitting there. I got the trailer ready. And I'll just kind of guide you where I want them. So we should sit right on that trailer? Yep. Yeah, we'll do the small one first. I'll show you where to put it, and then I got the uh, I got the four by fours sitting there where the big drill press will go. And then once we get that those on there, I'm gonna pull up out of the way, and I got a metal rack there. I'm gonna get you to set over next to that fence. Okay, that was gonna be top heavy, ain't it? Yeah, it's a little top heavy. That one you got to keep balanced.
We're gonna move the metal rack over here out of my way. Joe's heading out. I just give him my thanks and I told him that I owe him a favor. So we got some on the other side of the highway there. There's some side streets that he can jump across and go down to his shop. He's not too far. I've got the trailer ready to go. I've got two straps on each drill press. Got them nice and tight. I just double checked them. This one's not messing up any conduit right there. Okay. Hopefully the trailer will handle it. It's handled a lot of heavy loads. I've, I've hauled a full-size Tahoe on this. My old Malibu was on it many times. We've hauled some tractors on it. So it's handled some heavy loads. I hope it, it'll handle it this time. It should, be, it should be equivalent to the heavy tractors that we've had on there before. I'm using the Durango because I've got problems with the big truck, transmission problems I've had for a while, and that's why I'm not using it. The Durango should handle it as far as the power. It's got that 360 in it. It's got plenty of torque and horsepower. I'm going to take it nice and slow. It's about 8.30 Sunday morning, and I'm getting ready to pull out there, and I'm just I'm going to take it nice and slow. We'll maybe go about 20 miles an hour down the road. I ain't got too far to go. So here we go. So far so good, I'm about halfway there. I told you I'm taking it easy. Doing about 20, 25 miles an hour, that's it. That way it gives me plenty of uh, run out room to slow down. We got a couple traffic lights coming up, you know, but it's just hauling heavy loads always makes me nervous. I'd feel more comfortable if I was in my big truck. So anyway, we're almost there. So see you in a minute. Guys, we made a successful haul. I should have never doubted the Durango. It did just fine. So we're back here in the back nine of the of the work area. We got a lot of room back here. That's that's looking up towards the shop right there. Some of the other guys store some of their stuff up here. Get it out of the way. This is all unused area back here. So it's just going to sit here temporarily. Uh, maybe a week, po possibly two weeks max but we don't ever come back here. We got a building there that we put extra stuff in to get it out of the weather. I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, block it up right there and that's where it's gonna sit. I wanted to point this guy out to you. This is one that I fabricated a while back. I didn't actually fabricate the hitch part of it right here, but you see this piece in the middle shaped like a C, it's a channel. That is that same material that I used to make the machinist vise or the toolmaker's vise that we did for the giveaway, that was cut out of that same block of steel, that square, that 4140. So back whenever I, I decided to make this, I had this piece right here laying around the shop and I wanted to use it. So, you know, being a machinist and a welder, I just built it myself. So I cut that block out, I milled it out, drilled the holes, I cut this plate out with a torch welded it on really strong top and bottom and then I used some uh, grade 8 3 quarter bolts and cut the threads off and drilled them for those lynch pins and now I've got a nice adjustable height hitch right there that's heavy duty so on the big truck it's actually flipped the other way because it sits up so high in this case we flipped it up so it did a good job here's a little closer up shot of the uh, trailer 
I told you that I built this trailer right here. I had originally put that on there to hook one of those little cheap Harbor Freight winches on, which used to work, and I welded a, a D-ring on there as well so that you could, I've got some tow chains that I hooked to that with a shackle and holds the front end of the car. But all this right here I fabricated. I bought this, uh, this is some quarter inch plate that I had picked up from uh, Joe at his shop and cut it out. And I like that because it serves as a step. Whenever I'm coming from the ground up to the trailer, I can step up on there. And as well, whenever you're using your truck, you can step off your trailer onto this and go right up into the back of the, the truck. So just a couple fabrication things I wanted to point out. Okay, we're all unhitched and ready to go. So that's the end for this chapter here. We'll bring you back whenever Fred comes down here and picks the drills up.